Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to subscribe to the channel. Thanks to all new members. You see a join button on the channel. That's because you can become a member and get some extra new perks, new videos. And of course, we haven't tried it yet, but we'll be doing the member live stream very soon. Let's go on to the surface. Archimedes Crater, different magnification views to give you an idea of how I get in because it seems to be a mystery for a lot of people. So over to the right, it's hard to see that object uh, fluttering around under the haze seems to be on a very straight trajectory. So what we'll do is we'll advance ourselves up to see the object going by and a really good magnification um, without any pixelation to just quite simply to be able to see that UFO flying by. Copernicus, this is just at the bottom of Copernicus Crater. So if you look carefully, this is not pixelation. It is the surface of the moon. I've always wanted to see the surface of the moon and it's gray, very hard to see, but it's not impossible to see. This is the Rima Hyginus crater, by the way, at the back, you could tell where they say it imploded and look closely at the objects on the surface, how they're all connected. This is a nice shot. We're getting in nice and close and take a look at that. This is the Rima Hyginus crater. I'll get another view up for you. It's said to have imploded a lava chamber underneath. Um, the surface of the moon would have imploded itself. We see square objects almost everywhere on the surface. I think in the last two weeks, I must have showed you about four or five of them, maybe five or six of them. And this is on the surface um, of the moon, no manipulation, an inversion shot. First of all, you have to get a nice image to be able to start off with, right? And then when you have your nice clear image, well, depending on how many megapixels your camera has and uh, how you're able to magnify into your image, right? The better the quality of the camera, the more you can magnify and zoom into the images before they pixelate. There's no mystery about them. And the way I'm doing the magnification is with a very simple um, magnification uh, in my photo editor. So, I've showed you this before, the object hitting the moon, but we're going to go see it, slow it down, magnified it. I redid the entire video to get an even better shot. And this is really cool because it's a close up object shot of something spiraling to the moon. But I, of course, I always have new findings every time I go back and see the images. We're going to see it thrusting up this object, whatever it may be. And the thrust will be pointing towards the moon as it's going down. I'll show it to you actually backwards, but you will see it in this video. And again, this is an object catching on fire. You're seeing uh, the smokes hazes. Now check it out. Watch it one frame before. That's going towards the moon. You're actually seeing it backwards. So the moon's towards the right in this video, it's flipped over. So look at the fire come out like it's, you know, stalling like, like NASA when he goes to land on the moon and they thrust to slow down the vehicle. Just to mention, but those were two frames that we saw. And here again, the beautiful unknown object or objects that are spiraling towards the moon. Uh, one of two big objects that I've uh, ever caught on the moon. And again, we're seeing some color. For, I mean, I never see color in the objects going to the moon. They're like white clouds. But whatever this may be, it had a color. So you have to wonder what the heck it is. We're seeing some refraction as it's coming down there on the edge of the moon without any filter. Again, it's not color that's added, no saturation added, just straight up shot. Here, filtered with a white background um, after having been inverted to see the object. Our eyes see it differently. Watch your eyes once you, you leave the white uh, background, you will see even more of the colors and details. You're playing around with your eyes with these filters and colors to uh, permit us to, to get the best shots because that's always uh, what I'm doing each video is just trying to show you the clearest and closest view of anything and everything that I'm capturing. Now here it is. You saw that the flame, the thrust was ahead and now whoop, looks like it's in back. Whatever this may be, it's going up and down so it's something that the edge is uh, bent and that's why it looks like it's spiraling because it is actually rotating uh, I believe as it's uh, heading towards the moon. I wanted to get a video between streams up um, instead of waiting just for the other stream so hopefully you will be looking at this before uh, the stream tonight and again here's forward and backwards you see how it's spiraling um, you can see it turning around it's just something that the end is bent right so this is a very by the way, very long object, 
and it's pretty big if we're seeing it like that. Like the UFOs that I see, uh, um, you know, half a mile wide or whatever. Well, I don't know how wide they're long this is, but it, it sure is pretty, pretty long. No filter there. And here in it with inversion, look at the light around it. Obviously, because now it's approaching the moon and it's either there. See that flame? It looks like a dagger. You see that thrust there? It comes out that one frame there right before we see it either break apart, literally breaking apart as it's going to go very, very close to the moon. And this is like front row seats of seeing an object coming in. Notice that only the edge of the telescope was in all the images. Why? Because if I was filming on the moon, I would not see off of the moon. And that's why we do not see stars around the moon. You have to get off of the moon, but keep a little bright part of the moon to be able to see those incoming objects. So it's near impossible to cap capture them. So this is on the surface, right underneath Copernicus Crater, that line that I've showed you before. Uh, here's, check it out. Here's a couple of shots that I have, uh, just the edge of my house uh, with a UFO at 4.35 a.m. in the morning and here again one of my favorite captures i have many now uh, of a ufo that was slowed down over the house and then takes off after i ask it take off my friend press us picking up speed <laughs> thanks a lot see you soon So I asked him to take off, and he did. There it goes. I love it when they do that. Take off, my friend. Press us. Picking up speed. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See you soon. Awesome. So a UFO thrusting down, let's say right? <laughs> we don't even know what these things are. But here it is on the left, first frame, second frame in the middle, you see it's thrusting down, it loses its shape. And the first frame, you see it literally touching the surface. And then the third frame. Another one of my favorites. Ever see what looks like panels opening up and then you see this triangular or square-ish object. This is not a satellite, that's for sure. And if it is, I mean, like, listen, NASA says that there's experimental satellites, right? Aren't there? Okay, sure, maybe some of these can be um, experimental satellites. But when I see them that well, when I see them, you know, literally doing this in front of me, I don't think so. And there we see an inversion here. Just almost looks diamond shaped, doesn't it? And you see it in the sky right over my house. Here's one going by over the house. But you know what? It looks like it is turning or spiraling. You see the left, right, like it's inching left and right. Watch what happens on the left, two dots. And then watch on the right what happens. Another dot on the right. Just it, UFO in the sky that I'm analyzing. Maybe it was an asteroid. This is really cool. Look at how many flashes I got here in the infrared. One, two, three, four at the same time. You even see the fiery lines going from each of these objects. I mean, hey, it's not standard UFO, uh, uh, sorry, asteroid shots that I usually get. It really isn't. And... Uh, we'll look at it close enough that it's just pretty cool to see that they're conjoint, that the lines, it looks like one object that broke in three pieces. You see the squiggly lines right there, uh, clear as day in the bottom, uh, connecting them to show that they were a part of each other. That's pretty amazing. Or maybe they hit each other. There's another object just a bit further. And of course, on top is uh, the star, just a regular star. But isn't that incredible? Look at the flash. You see them here. It's about as close as we can get. And again, it's objects that are either catching on fire or something. And there is uh, the flash without any inversion, straight up infrared. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. This is just a shot of something that came into the atmosphere. It was like a flash of uh, light. I wasn't able to capture it for very long. It was in the, um, uh, the a bad area anyways. Look at the, did you just see that? I showed you lights inside of a crater. Okay, the sides of the lights, um, the sides of the craters have lights. Look at here, the greenery along the craters. Who says that's not frozen lakes and rivers, you know? You see it coming down there along where there's some, like greenery. And again, no filtering. What about this monolithic object that is high rising off the surface, has a very big shadow, it looks like it's bent over, it almost looks like a guy with flippers on going to the beach, right? 
Well, look at these objects. I believe those are the bases or structures that are or were being used presently on the moon. I mean, are they ancient? Are they recent? That's a whole other story, isn't it? You bring down the lights, the exposure, and you could really see um, what lights are on the moon. And I'm going to show you some areas where it just basically looks like there's fires on the surface. Like here, almost looks like we're looking at um, lava, right? On the surface at night in Hawaii or something, flying over with a helicopter. Well, this is on the moon, and those fires are on the moon. And yes, I believe they're fires. And we could see movement, and we could see that there's an atmosphere entirely hiding them. And they're plunged into that. And with the lights, well, it's causing refraction and making it harder for us to see the surface. But is it not incredible? I hope you guys get to see this at around 7-ish, I'm hoping, an hour before uh, 8 o'clock live stream. Um, you know, a lot of contributions. Crawlface, André Saint-Pierre, um, uh, thank you to, to your wife, my your loving wife, my friend Natalie um, Saint-Pierre for the generous contributions. He says she, she watches the channel. Thank you so much. Here's re cr thank Crawlface. Man, thanks. Everybody, uh, all the contributors today on the live stream too, from Dennis Delano to all the members, LT Gold's a member now. I mean, I, I can't, you know, Cindy Lou Who, but a little carefree. I can't uh, thank you all enough. This is the Rima Hygienist, by the way. All right, I'm going to prepare for the live stream. So we know the real story. It's either humans, aliens, or hybrids, or humans and aliens, or, well, you know, it could be also, for example, could be something. <laughs> Houston, say again, please. Uh,